Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I gotta say, making videos perch style, it's truly the only way to fly. I got into this kind of miserable mindset where I started treating every single video like it was a thesis paper, I needed footnotes, I needed you to look at the screen, and here's the deal. The bad actors are always going to be bad actors. Even when you prove A to B to C to D to E, they're still going to say like, no, or nuh uh. So it's like, fuck it, whatever. Most of y'all are driving or playing video games. You're not looking at the screen, so I gotta stop taking this so seriously. It was making me think that I do kind of miss academia. Like, I might go back and actually finish my master's degree. I, uh, I had a master's degree, it was online university. And right before I was about to graduate, they eliminated that degree. But they're like, oh yeah, we're, uh, we got rid of that degree. I'm like, what the fuck? They're like, oh, but we can give you credit for this. It was like essentially general studies. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? But I was just thinking, it's got to be a lot easier in some regards to get a college degree. Because back in the day, you would go for these hour and a half lecture courses just furiously scribbling notes. And now you can just record it in voice to text, and then you can have chat GPT summarize each lecture. That seems a lot easier. But anyway, uh, it's awards season. It's funny, I literally said this in a video a few days ago. I was like, SJWs are happier than they've ever been. It's crazy because things are not good in the industry. And then at one point I said, they love uh, giving each other awards. Here's an award. What's an award for? I don't know. Being gay? I don't know. Here's, here's your award. Here's a few awards. So um, they just had the Eisner, or as I call them, the, uh, the Asties. Um, uh, the Eisner Awards, to me, are now the Asterisk Awards. It's like, Eisner nomination for best story, asterisk. And then you go to the bottom of the page, and the asterisk says, uh, not really. <laughs> um... So at some point, I think around 2016 or so, when Mags got uh, nominated for Kim and Kim, which is just like LOL so random humor, <laughs> it's at that point that I really stopped taking the Eisner nominations seriously. So Heather Antos just got nominated for Eisner Awards. Why? Well, for some categories, if a book has a single writer, the writer will get the Eisner nomination. But if there are several writers, the editor will get it. So Heather got nominated for an anniversary issue of Star Trek. Whatever. Nothing matters. <laughs> and if you're wondering how long she took to use that to dunk on Chuds, it was two days. It was actually about a day and a half. And if you thought Heather Antos was insufferable before, just imagine Heather Antos with an Eisner nomination. Uh, Joe Glass got two gay awards for being gay. One was literally called the Gay Mean Awards. It was gay in gaming. Somehow, the Gay Mean Awards has a comics category. Whatever. Nothing matters. But I think that's one of the reasons they're so ebullient lately. In that they're like, oh, it's award season and it's just about to be convention season. And that's the stuff they really like. They like Netflix deals, they like awards, and they like convention appearances. Even if no one shows up to the convention, even if it's just them sitting alone at a card table for eight hours, that's somehow, quote, being a celebrity, unquote. And they love to use that to dunk on people. But I saw someone commit one of the most unforced of unforced errors I've ever seen. In that he was complaining... That crowdfunding, specifically CG and Eric July, are not getting nominations. And I was like, oh, God, why? And then, what is that phrase? Après moi, le déluge. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, you are going to get clowned. And then it was just an absolute deluge of the usual suspects on Twitter just clowning this guy. And I'm like, bro, why would you do that? 
First of all, asking for an award is like asking for hugs. And you just open yourself up to so many attacks. So I'm not going to bury the lead. When you work in crowdfunding, specifically, exclusively, or almost exclusively, you are cutting yourself loose of the mainstream. You don't get the benefits of being in the mainstream. You don't get the drawbacks of being in the mainstream. And you don't get the awards or the award nominations or even the possibility. Now, I believe technically crowdfunding can qualify for Eisner nominations, mainstream awards. But I have a couple of thoughts. First of all, why do you care? <laughs> if you have completely eschewed the mainstream for whatever reason, why do you care about mainstream awards, especially like current year mainstream awards? Where like you can look at the nominations and you can say, okay, that one, no, eh, no. And like for every one that seems legitimate based on merit, there's another one that is clearly there based on politics or I don't know. For some reason, Heather Antos is making a comeback. Like they are really trying to make Heather Antos a thing out of nowhere. No real inciting incident. They are just really rallying around Heather, specifically in the last few months. But if you're going to leave the mainstream, why would you care about mainstream accolades and awards? Especially when the Eisners are now the Asties. It used to be a huge honor, and now it's just an eye roll to be Eisner nominated. But let's look at a few reasons besides just politics and peer pressure. By the way, Perch had a video from earlier today, and it was really good. But I was absolutely kicking myself because I've made literally thousands of videos on this subject and I never encapsulated it so well as he did. He basically said that cancel culture is simply a punk check. It's literally just a test about how controllable you are. They're going to lob accusations. It was a really sad video because it was someone who wanted to work in the mainstream. And he was basically seeing that being canceled is inevitable. So he was asking for advice before his mainstream career already began. But let's just look at the numbers. The mainstream puts out about 100 to 150 floppy comics every single week. Backer Kit will show you the top crowdfunding campaigns at any one time. It's only for active campaigns, not for in demand. But I mean, it covers Indiegogo, Kickstarter, Zoop. And then Backer Kit also has its own crowdfunding platform. And it's a pretty good list. And I'm telling you, for major crowdfunding campaigns, there's not even 100 per year. Crowdfunding campaigns that make more than a few thousand dollars, it's like 100 or less. So the mainstream literally pumps out 52 times as many projects as crowdfunding does. There's like five nominations for each category, and there's like 20 categories. So do the math. If the mainstream outnumbers you 52 to 1, it's kind of ridiculous that anyone even thinks anyone in crowdfunding, and that's regardless of politics and peer pressure and all of that, just as a numbers game. But then the Eisners also nominate stuff from regular book channels, regular bookstores, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Scholastic. And then we're getting into some real, like, you need an agent to get you promotion, all this type of thing. So just numbers-wise, I don't really see it. As far as quality-wise, crowdfunding is still fairly new. And the things that tend to be popular are the things that evoke certain positive feelings of nostalgia. So one of the charges against the mainstream press is that, why won't you cover this successful person, this successful person? You are ostracizing them because of politics. But they also don't cover Brian Polito, who's made like seven and a half million dollars in crowdfunding. They just don't cover him, barely at all. When you cut yourself free from the mainstream, you cut yourself free from a lot of stuff, including all of the bullshit. You don't have to deal with their shit. But the idea about caring about boards where people like Mags and Joe Glass and Heather not only get nominated, but win, and win multiple awards from multiple different award organizations. And why would you open yourself up to being clowned for asking for validation from clowns? 
Now, the other thing is that with the limited amount of books produced by crowdfunding, in comparison to mainstream of both the direct market and traditional publishing, there's just a lot fewer books to even be nominated. And also, like, what actually qualifies for awards? Well, a lot of these people are just starting. A lot of these people, they literally have one book they've put out. The idea that your first book you're ever going to put out is going to be award-worthy is kind of ridiculous. Usually people win awards for actual merit, not identity, after 5, 10, 20 decades of work. But of the work that's been produced, I would really only say it was like Narwhal stuff. Like Narwhal definitely seems like the type of person who should be nominated in a short story or anthology category. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just flat out brilliant, like savant level work. So Narwhal is someone that I think actually does deserve award nominations. But as far as I know, Narwhal has only worked in crowdfunding, which is apart from mainstream, both for awards, for press coverage, for basically everything. Now, should crowdfunding come up with its own awards? No. <laughs> Just put out books, deliver the books, make good books, improve in your artistry, in your skill, in your delivery, in, in your customer service. Don't worry about mainstream awards. There's this weird controversy with this guy who I guess was a professor at an art school, and a lot of his students are coming forward because he just got nominated for an Eisner, and yet they're like, oh, when I was his student five, ten years ago, he said he hated comics. Well, I don't really understand what your point is. Obviously, he changed his mind, but I saw Vita complaining, and then some other diversity hire was like, I'm so glad I didn't get nominated this year because it would tarnish it to be nominated in the same year as this guy. Imagine being nominated in 2016 when Mags was, or in 2023 when Heather was, or in 2024 when Joe Glass probably would be. Like, Eisner's has lost its shine. It's no longer prestigious. So why would you care? Anyway, before I go, first kill graphic novel, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.